my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious sh It has begun! Calm down, Doctor. Now is not the time for fear. I can do his pain. Give them nothing! But take from them everything! Program complete. Ready. Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Geek News Reviews and Opinions, the podcast where we talk the month's events in geek for the first podcast of 2024. Yay! I am your host, Adam Mickelson, aka Drac. I hope everybody's having an awesome day or night when you're listening to this. And joining me is my usual pa- panel of fellow geeks, fellow awesome people, fellow geeks in general. And uh, Alex the Shadow Blazer, you're looking awfully pink tonight. <laughs> really, am I? He's pink. How you doing, Alex? <laughs> okay. What you really look like ex- is exhausted, probably. Yeah, but thank God the holidays are over. All the hard stuff's over, so... <laughs> did you did you have a last-minute surge like I did? Uh, Probably. But nothing quite like as bad as last year. So, OK, I was just wondering if like you had any complications or anything like that now that you're in the new building and all that, because my work had a last minute surge. But that was because we literally went three months without a flake of snow. And then we got, what, a week and a half of blizzards? Not quite blizzards. Uh, not even Blizzards for me. <laughs> they were pretty. I'll th- uh, still nothing's ever going to compare to last again compared to last year both in terms of work and the weather so uh, I don't know no, dude I'll- like we we almost had like me because we for some reason we uh, my company has moved further south so at right. that point um, we were dealing with near whiteout conditions in uh, Utah County pretty consistently and it was it was it was kind of crazy especially considering that apparently a lot of our seasonal hires have never dealt with snowy driving at all doesn't surprise me i i just like i'm thoroughly convinced we got a bunch of people who uh came here one time for spring break thought it was the greatest thing ever and decided to live here and then they got near whiteout conditions oh just, yeah i mean I've, I've certainly had similar co-workers right they've moved here from like california or somewhere where the never really snows and then they mm. don't know how to deal with the snow so yeah i totally yep. believe it and then also joining us is brinton volley who brinton I, I hope you had a really great holiday season because for you it's right back to it is it not Ah, uh, i i I've been sick for the last several weeks, so this is probably, I mean, besides my usual exhaustion, this is the best I've felt in weeks. So what I'm telling everybody is that this is a typical podcast in January, because since I'm kind of the podcast freak amongst the three of us, I get around this time of year, it's like January and February, I get to hear about like at least one panelist on all the podcasts I listen to. They're all deathly sick, and it's primarily because they live in like, uh, utah or idaho or like a a state that gets a lot of snow so they're they're just like freaking cold and then in the summer they'll complain about getting sick because of con fever uh and stuff like that so yes it's Mm -hmm. it's been oh so great for you brinton and for us because we've had to work in the conditions uh so first of all happy new year to both of you happy 2024 hopefully since we're recording so late into 2024 it hasn't seen you badly spoiler alert it kind of has uh for a lot of us uh but also i hope your holiday season was full of fun and family goodness i I was sick but sure (laughs) (laughs) so uh with this you know usually this is the time this is the time of the podcast where we're talking about like what we've been playing what we've been watching and all that stuff and since we kind of have a holiday version um, is there anything in particular that you guys played or watched uh, that had a family component to it? So, like for Brenton, like your did your hubby and and your uh, 
Ah, oh, crap. I don't even know what to say. Stepdaughter, uh, come in and watch it or come and participate in it, etc. And all that stuff. Uh, they, like, we didn't, um, we didn't, like, play games aggressively in, in that kind of scenario. Uh, mm-hmm. however, the, like, all those additional Mario Kart 8 tracks that have come out over the course of like 2022 2023 all of them have been completely released so the game is as complete as it can be uh, at this point so we so we caught up on all the racetracks and played a lot of mario kart which i'm pretty i'm pretty sure my family was getting annoyed with me about because i'm just really good at mario kart (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, and and have you played online like consistently? So you you would probably know like all the things that they would do, and probably start using it against everybody else. Because that's my problem is now that I played online, uh, I can't play Mario Kart with people because like I will literally start using the same tactics I see online all the time, and people hate me. Yeah, it's I've I've just played Mario Kart for a very 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 long time so i'm just not a super i'm just not a super fun person to play with because (laughs) i know how to i just know how to play it and uh all those best tricks and um ways to essentially just stay above and ahead of everybody the entire time Mm. um and i ended up telling my husband and stepdaughter like exactly what I do, exactly how they play the game. And it was received with you're cheating. And I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're done. <laughs> you're not cheating unless you get the blue shell, then you're cheating. That That's how it works online. So that's how it will work with the family environment. Essentially told them, I was like, look, I clearly even after you all have obliterated me with every attack item in the game, still win every mm-hmm. single time. So, sure, I'm cheating. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Just accept it, Brinson. Just accept it. Uh, nah. <laughs> Alex, what about <laughs> you? No, I don't. Sadly, I don't really have anyone to play with around the holidays anymore. Oh, Alex has no life now. He has a life. He's just so what? So what have you been able to play uh, that hasn't been in a family environment? Well, I did uh, kind of revisit an old favorite of mine from childhood from the N64 days. I found me an N64 emulator and a ROM of Shadows of the Empire, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. So I've been playing, playing that a lot. OK, and, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of it, pretty much it. Okay. Uh, for me, I, I've got to say, like, a lot of the the gaming uh, on on my end has actually been pretty sparse because um, around this time of year is when my daughters start getting sick for the winter. And so they basically have been bringing stuff home. And at that point, it usually comes to us and then we're just like dead. And we don't want to play anything. We just, but we, but we strangely want to watch everybody else play something uh, because we'll have some kind of like a long play on of uh, Mario or Zelda. And then we're all just like, it was actually kind of cute. We had one night where we had myself, my wife and my two daughters all on the bed where I was nearly falling off of it. And we were all watching like a Mario <laughs> galaxy long play. How fun. And if, That's actually and really if, fun. If, my oldest Ari had had her way. She probably would have pushed me off the bed. Uh, Cause apparently both my girls love, love my old, old as the Hills pillow. I might actually give it to them as soon as I get a new one, but uh, cause they, they just love that thing and, and think it's the greatest thing ever enough. So that they will push me off my pillow in order to sit on the bed. Um, But yeah, we did that. But a lot of the stuff we've been doing has been, movie watching because we watched a little bit of the Mario movie. We watched a little bit of uh, Arthur Christmas, which was like my first time ever seeing it all the way through. I think I'd seen clips. And so that was fun to watch with the kids. And it was a Christmas movie that they actually wanted to sit down and watch. So I'll, I'll take my victories where I can get it. 
But on an individual basis, uh, me and Andrea have actually been working on getting back into Hogwarts Legacy as we made kind of a crucial decision in the fact that uh, we're now just kind of kind of keep the new games for ourselves. And I know that that's going to piss off some people who enjoy our streams, but we wanted to be able to also game on our own again. And the first thing that we wanted to play was Hogwarts Legacy because we haven't we haven't gotten anywhere near finishing it. And we wanted to be able to see that story through. So I have a feeling like if there's another Harry Potter game that comes out very soon, we'll play it on stream. But until then, we're probably just going to play the brand new games on our own. I know. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good idea. I, I know some people are going to be like, but we liked watching. And for the record, yes, we will finish up God of War Ragnarok because we are way too far into that. So we'll stream that. But after that, like I've I've been kind of pushing for uh, Final Fantasy 16 to be next, either that or Hi-Fi Rush, because I want to see how those games go. But that's what we've been playing. And now we are in a whole new year. So we, we have one major discussion to have before we get into the things that we are looking forward to in 2024, because we are looking at the possibility of a, of a new console this year. So I have to eat a bunch of crow because I speculated for the longest time it was going to be 2025. But now there's enough evidence basically saying that it's going to be a uh, holiday of 2024 when we will get uh, the as Reddit has has affectionately called it, the Switch Series X. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the the Switch 360. Switch 720, literally all of these names have been used on Reddit. Just I love it. Switch NX. <laughs> Switch next. Switch X has been used. The Switch X, the Switch U has been used, thankfully. I, I really wanted them to use that. Um, or, or the other one that made me laugh was the Switch. So basically, uh, S-W-I-I-T-C-H. So the Switch. Switch. So, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. um, I also like the uh, the Nintendo Ouija board. That was That was another good one. A Nintendo Ouija board. Yes, yes. Reddit, <laughs> came, Reddit came up with that. I'm like, mm, yeah, that, that's how inventive gameplay is for Nintendo now. I could totally see them making a Ouija board. Uh, except they, they do it out of their cardboard kits. So we have a bunch of speculation that has happened on how this is going to unfold. First of all, we are looking at holiday 2024 when the Switch Series X joins the fray uh what how do, how do you guys feel about that as a release time so like around the holidays of 2024 sound right does it sound bad i think it sounds right because then it can make a potential gift for somebody i i do too like this is one of those things where like one of the things that helped the wii u and i know that people want to talk about how much of, of a failure the wii u was but they failed to realize that it actually did do well in its release, um, at least in that first surge. And I'm guaranteeing you, if that surge was not in the holidays, it wouldn't have had it. So at that point, uh, that would be the last time that they did it during the holidays because the switch was in March. I think this is the perfect time to do it because people will come out in droves and we'll have the same problem that we did with the Wii where no one will have any in stock. I think this is going to be a really good like we you got to make sure you're hopping on them pre-orders so that way you can walk out with a um me and Nintendo my wife Switch are already, too. I, I don't know about you Brunton but me and my wife are already trying to work out like okay okay can we just save like from here to here and we will make sure that we have enough money so that it's fully paid off and we'll have enough money for a game for each of us maybe one for the family and we'll be good. I'm already starting to budget for it as well. Yeah, so yes, totally yes. Get it. This, this is how you know we're parents is like we're trying to figure out, OK, we still have to feed the kids, but we also got to get the new hotness. So already we're, we're looking at that, but we're also looking at a reveal. If people remember the initial reveal for the the switch well, they did an initial reveal in October, but we didn't get an official reveal of like what it was until uh, January. Until then, everyone was like, what the fuck is this thing? It's got a portable screen. Can it handle 1080p? 
And then in January, they they elaborated on a lot of it. But right now, the, the guess is that we're probably going to skip that October kind of reveal. And we're just going to go right into uh, the January reveal. And that's probably going to happen either later this month or it's going to happen in February to get the hype train rolling. And then at that point, maybe we'll get a Nintendo Direct that will give us more details around June uh, for people to get excited. Especially, I have a feeling that would be when they would announce a games lineup or a launch lineup for it. Mm-hmm. Right? Wrong? What, what What do you guys' take on it? Wait, it sounds reasonable, for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, what do you think? Like, you said end of February, perhaps? End of January, sometime in February. Um, is what the is what the rumors are. We're pretty close to the end. We only got like three weeks left of January. Mm-hmm. So I would say I'd push it out a little more towards the middle to end of February. I, I will because... tell you why I'm I'm not willing to rule out the end of January because we all know Nintendo Directs come out of nowhere. Like we, we don't get like th- this is one of the things that actually kind of annoys me with like the big console makers and their streams is you don't get any hype before it is literally announced that Monday. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're doing this. And then at that point, it's like, oh, I have to rearrange my entire weekly schedule so that I can watch this. So that's why I'm not ruling it out, because you could easily have somebody come in Monday morning and go, oh, yeah, by the way, we're doing a direct. And no, we're not going to tell you what anything about what it's about. I guess that's fair enough. You're right mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, they'll do it in June. Like, they'll, they'll give us all the hype, but not when they do one in like March, they're just like, eh, yeah, we're just doing this. Don't say anything yeah. that everybody has to watch. I mean, recent, like mo- definitely most recently when those directs or any sort of presentation from Nintendo is um, about to be announced, it's always like to like 24 to 48 hours before. And it's very random. It's very, oh, yeah, by the way, this is happening by it's like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, OK. Oh, OK. Hey, thanks. Right. right. Uh, Congratulate uh, or good luck trying to rearrange your schedule. Thanks, Nintendo. I mean, seriously, should, it's Shintaro Furukawa. He knows the benefit of hype. He, he was on the Pokemon team for crying, crying his sake. I mean, Nintendo just kind of goes about their like their business practices are just very different from the rest of the developing studios right. in the gaming industry to just kind of go the problem is, on... is that they're they're the innovator when it comes to this so microsoft and sony started doing the same damn thing like oh my. freaking hell man I, I mean of course yep um nintendo has definitely in the last at least five or more years established that they um just kind of do things to the beat of their own drum. So, uh, so the the next thing that we actually need to get into because people have actually asked this, and I've gone all over, and I can't get a whole lot confirmed because, again, we need the we need the direct reveal to be able to do this. What do we think is going to be the gimmick of this console? Because apparently now Nintendo has to have a gimmick with every console, and and the reasoning here is that if people remember the Wii had the Wii the Wii mode. Uh, where motion controls were brought into it. The Wii U had the gamepad, which was basically prototype switch. Um, so at that point, you could have a touch screen that you could manipulate things on and and basically use the gamepad as like an admin mode during party games, stuff like that. And then obviously the switch was uh, a powerful console, but as a handheld kind of thing. Um, now, I will tell you guys what the speculation is. Because we Let's don't hear it. No, this will be Nintendo basically creating a 4K or an HD console. Um, it will be as powerful as either the as the PS4 slash PS5. They're saying like somewhere in between that. <clears throat> so it will be it would be able to do at least 1080p, maybe 4K. But by then, like PS5 and, and Series X are technically capable of 8K at this point. So they would still kind of be a step behind. It would still be portable, but the speculation is and and I'm I'm sticking with this, that the dock will basically act as a a console in and of itself where you will be able to play portably and and all that. But it will have limited 
limited capacity, whereas the console dock itself will have the the more the more awesome capacity and and ability. Or it will just be like a straight up console again, and we won't even have a handheld component, et cetera. I tend to lean in that regard. What what do you guys think is going to be the uh, the the gimmick for the Switch 360? Oh my gosh, you're. I'm going through all the your, names. I'm going through all of them. You're, you're throwing me off with all these different names. Yep. Um. Oh my god. Um. I. I think it could. I think that this could very well just be an upgraded version of what we currently have, because mm. it's working. Uh, right. And, and it's been very, very successful. And you can't say I that it isn't working because PlayStation just barely put out their Switch variant. Exactly. I did like I also did see rumors about the um, wow, about the console running uh, the equivalent of PS4 generation graphics and a lot of mm-hmm. people griping about that, which I found funny because then in that same vein, there were individuals who were like, did we all forget what the PS4 like put out? Did we all forget what it looked like? Right. <laughs> Right. Like, why, why, why are we getting all upset? <laughs> because it's the stigma of like, Nintendo's always a generation behind. They're the kitty console. And that's that's what plays into that. And it's absolutely stupid. Honestly, I, I do not understand why um, people still attach to that, because Nintendo has been able to find success in their own right by not even remotely participating in the console war they are just off doing their own thing and as and and as we have seen there are like there are times where it's been unsuccessful Mm. and then other times where it has been very successful and they owned the time like and when they presented the switch back in 2017 which is kind of weird to say um oh my gosh it's 2024 um uh when they presented the switch they full on admitted and owned the fact that yeah we've stumbled Mm -hmm. along the way and i think we have something here that you all will be really really happy about well and on top Um, of that like one of their biggest initiatives when when launching that was taking care of the one thing that both the wii and the wii u had been suffering from which was lack of third-party support so guess what they did? They reached out to the third parties. They reached out to indie developers a lot. And so you had a lot of exclusivity deals that happened with those indie games that are now available on other consoles. But they had like a, a minimum 12 month exclusivity contracts with Nintendo. I mean, perfect I example, feel... Octopath Traveler. Yes, yes. I was going to say that I feel that Nintendo is or at least the Nintendo Switch is the most perfect machine to play these indie titles on right. if you're not going to play them on, uh, what's it called? Steam. On Steam Deck. So, Because yeah. yeah. the only thing that the Steam Deck has, aside from it can do like PC, like gaming PC type graphics, is the fact that it has more hard drive space. If Nintendo right. immediately upgraded the hard drive space, they'd actually contend with Steam Deck. I'm I'm not kidding, guys. Because people love Nintendo. It's the nostalgia console. They would literally like if it put it up against the the Steam Deck, you you'd have serious contendership. If they I had think, the same kind of hardware. I feel that the only gimmick that the new Nintendo, like the new Nintendo Switch console should have is like better storage space. So that way right. I don't have to budget for like a micro SD card so that way mm. I can have space in my console to play stuff. Or at least um, like don't make the SD cards like Nintendo compliant where they have to be uh you know working for unique Nintendo hardware. Like make it so that I could take my regular everyday SD card and plug that sucker in. And oh, they're never gonna at, do that. <laughs> at that point, like yeah, I know they're never gonna do it, but like that would solve everything because then I could just plug my, you know, 600 gig or 750 gig SD card and and I wouldn't have to worry about that. But no, no, Nintendo won't do that unless they expand the hard drive space in their own way. And uh, because I remember when I first met Jason, 
uh, he was asking me questions about the Nintendo Switch because, mm -hmm. you know, oh, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, I like playing video games. Oh, tell me, like, tell me more about that. Blah, 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 blah. And then we, and then I just gave him a bunch of tips about, oh, well, uh, if you're going to, like, you know, look, you know, look for this, don't look for that, buy here, not there. Oh, you're also going to want to get storage. Here are some SD cards that are compatible with the Switch right. because if you, buy if you don't buy what i'm recommending then you're going to be wasting money and you're going to be really mad yes. and i want this to be a an experience that you share with your daughter um mm -hmm. when you have her for visitation um and i even like went out of my way to purchase some like like purchase the sd card and even like uh, brought some accessories I wasn't even using because and then I brought them when we first met and had our first date um, and he was really grateful for that so I like what you're saying here Adam mm -hmm. uh, to you know to bring it full circle I would like to be able just to go and buy an SD card of my choosing and mm -hmm. have an insane amount of storage on my switch <laughs> yeah exactly like i mean it, it doesn't even have to be an sd card per se you could easily just have a bigger hard drive in the switch and now right, they figured right. everything out um hardware wise they could easily because guys do you realize how big some of these hard drives are they're like one terabyte and whatever they're they're small enough they could fit in the switch so at that point I, like now they can figure that out i like by all means like, yeah by all means that that's um in terms of gimmicks i would say more hard drive space <laughs> exactly. which i know is not which isn't really a gimmick it's just a it's an ask uh especially since there are people who were uh in you know into speculations and rumors saying that this console may be uh up to 400 or more dollars so i would like to know what i'm spending 400 or more dollars potentially on in um you know within the the duration of the year mm -hmm. uh alex what about you because like the switch i'm not saying it, it was your first nintendo console but you you've gotten a lot of miles out of your switch yeah <laughs> and no not my first by a mile uh that would have been the super nintendo way back in the day so mm -hmm. there you go so i can't i can't think of anything in terms of gimmicks but i can definitely agree that most likely you know, just because of Nintendo's history, most likely gonna still be fairly behind the curve mm. in terms of in terms of power and output. I wouldn't be surprised to say, yeah, PS4 at launch, you know, before the middling increment upgrades. Mm. But yeah, you know, I don't see them ditching the handheld idea of so soon. No, maybe like another console generation down the line, but not right now. Like clearly, the Switch is. Uh, the whole handheld switch you the, know, hybrid is the, so successful for them. It makes more sense for them to just kind of op optimize the setup. So mm -hmm. like they're probably going to look at Sony because the PlayStation portal is probably what they're going to go for, where you have that ha you have that handheld setup, but you also have it attached to a much more powerful piece of hardware. And therefore you're able to, because really what the portal is, is yes, it does have its own hard drive and whatever, but it, it's got, uh, from what people have been able to tell me that have played with it, it's got really great Wi-Fi capabilities, especially when it is uh, within a certain amount of distance from the PS5. So at that point, like it's able to play seamlessly and you can play it wherever you want. And so at that point, Nintendo would just say, oh, well, we'll we'll capitalize on that. Then we will make a much more powerful frame that then your portable version can can hook up with and you can have a lot of fun with um, that yeah. way. There's still that mobile factor, but then you also, you can have the more powerful stuff, especially now that, you know, some of the games, if you're going to go into the HD era, some of these games now are, are almost damn near a terabyte uh, of space, if not more than that. So yeah, you're going to need to increase the hard drive, but I also think that it's, uh, they, they're also just going to make it so that, there's a portability version uh, version of being able to do things. But more importantly, we're now going to give you this big hunk of hardware that you can hook up to it and be able to play all of the, the cool games too. Um, 
and Brent had already brought this up, but I'll I'll bring it to you guys. Already, the the speculation is that this is going to be the first Nintendo console to breach the 300 mark. So the highest that a Reddit got this wrong, technically, they they said that the highest Nintendo priced console was three hundred dollars. No, actually, it was three hundred three hundred thirty five dollars because the the switch when it or the Wii U when it first came out had a big ass bundle that was like three thirty five uh, because it came with uh, it came with like two games uh, and I think two of the pro controllers with it, along with the gamepad, whereas the base version just had the gamepad. So, yeah, that that did happen. But this is going to be a console that goes to the four hundred to four hundred fifty dollar range. And we all know Nintendo has been able to like one of the reasons they've stayed in the market as long as they have is because they've been able to put out these consoles for fairly cheap. And therefore, that's how they are able to compete with PS4s and whatnot, because PS4s, PS5s, they're like 500 bucks easily. But now it looks like we're probably going to be looking at a similar price for the the Switch U. Is this acceptable to either of you? I mean, it's just kind of the natural progression of things. You know, these consoles have gotten more. Oh, and also they they than... have confirmed that they will be joining the other console makers <laughs> and the baseline for their games will now be 70 bucks. Yeah, and again, that, that makes sense. It's just. You it's know, the, the it's the natural progression of where we're going. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say this was a Nintendo president, like maybe for the last one, who said we can't keep selling these at a loss. So it does make sense that they're gonna probably try to bump up the price. To oh, you're talking about the uh, interim one that I can't think of his name. Yeah, I because Furukawa came was... in after him. Yeah, I cannot remember. I couldn't remember if that even was from Nintendo or from one of the others, but. Either way, it just makes sense, you know. These mm -hmm. the hardware keeps getting more powerful, but with right, but with that comes an increased cost for R and D. Uh, certainly, other complications in the markets, you know, just obtaining these processors, obtaining chips, obtaining manufacturing parts to mm. put these consoles together. You know, hiring out, uh, and of course, wanting to pay your employees who work at your companies. You know, it's just, oh, of course, stuff's going to go up in price. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Nintendo kind of join the rest of the pack and start kind of bumping up their costs. A little to bit more. answer your earlier question, it was Tatsumi Kimishima. OK, Kimishima. There Kimishima, because he was the one who did the switch reveal. Right. So, so, yeah. So it just it makes sense. And yeah, I can totally understand, you know, paying out 400 bucks for for the next switch i did for the ps5 so you know it, it's fine it's just how consoles are they're expensive okay uh brinton did, did you did you chime in as well because i i know you agree with alex but i i don't think you got your opinion out i don't really have anything to add to okay. what um he was saying okay it's pretty spot on so at that point i'm i'm going to irritate people when i say this but it's got to be worth it <laughs> if you're yeah. going to make me uh, I, I, I hate to be the broken record here, but if you're going to make me pay 400 bucks, then the launch lineup had better be worth it. If you're going to make me pay $70 for a video game, it had better be freaking worth it, because here's the thing. The indie market can give me a much uh, a much more worthwhile experience if your game is broken for half the price, if not less than that. So at that given moment, like I don't have a problem paying 70 bucks for a Zelda game that is deserving of that price tag. But if it isn't deserving of that price tag, I have every problem with it. So uh, do I understand Nintendo's reasoning for it? Absolutely. That's they're, they're doing it because everybody else is doing it. And frankly, yeah, one of the problems that Nintendo has had in their history is that they have tended to sell a lot of these consoles and games at a loss. And so at that point, in order for them to function and be able to continue to, to, sustain themselves in the current gaming atmosphere, they do need to actually make profit out of it. And frankly, I think they can because they're still the ones that are putting out worthwhile franchises that people care about. So I, I don't think that that'll be a problem. And frankly, I don't think that it's going to be a problem for Nintendo to put out games that are worth $70. 
I really don't think that's going to be a problem. They've, they've mm-hmm. already upped the quality so many times in the past few years. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, so that being said, so we've gone over the price. We've gone over the gimmicks and all that stuff. Uh, the other speculation is what games are coming to it and what franchises are probably going to be moving over to the Switch, what's getting retired, etc. So going through the rumor mill, these are nothing is set in stone until we actually see it. But this is what people are saying right now via the rumor mill of what is coming over to the Switch Series S. Um, first of all, uh, so so basically what we're going to do, we're going to go over all of the major franchises that seem to be carried over. Um, if there are some that we think will also be carried over, we'll mention them. But let's start things off with Animal Crossing. Uh, supposedly there is going to be an animal cross or there is an animal crossing in development for this console. We know nothing about where it is in terms of development. I would say it's pretty far considering new, uh, crap. What, what was it? The, what was the one that came out on switch Island paradise? It's the one where you get an Island, not a town. New horizons. Is that it? New horizons. Yeah. Okay, it's it's the one that came out with Doom or with Doom Eternal. Okay, um, so and, and it's funny because oh, sorry for some reason I for some reason I wasn't piecing that together, but yeah, new <laughs> apparently. So yes, <laughs> supposedly there is an Animal Crossing coming for the next one. Um, oh jeez, New Horizons came out in twenty one twenty 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 twenty. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we because have it was right at the exact same time as when the COVID shutdown started happening. Right. So pretty much that was when nobody could find a Nintendo Switch. And then because Animal everybody... Crossing and Bethesda or Nintendo and Bethesda teamed up when when a bunch of people did a bunch of memes with Isabel being friends with Doom Guy. So yeah, yeah. everybody was using their COVID money to buy Animal Crossing and a Nintendo. <laughs> Or, or Doom Eternal. They, the, the numbers were actually pretty close, honestly. It was pretty <laughs> impressive, indeed. Yeah. And the best part was, is that's one of those times where gamers came together. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't happen anymore. We should uh, have another pandemic. <coughs> no, we don't need another <laughs> pandemic. You, you stop that line of thought right now. <laughs> There was like a momentary pause and then you both were like, wait, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you were like that in your brain, too. It's like, wait, what have I just said? Um, oh, I, w- I was just being a pill. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, let, let's speculate here. So if they started development literally right after, which I doubt, I, I think in all honesty, they probably started conceptual stuff in 2021 and they gave all the animal crossing team a much needed break. Uh, so at that point, we're probably looking at two, two and a half years of development so far. Do we think it's be, possible yeah. that animal crossing could be a launch title or will it come further along? Because the speculation right now is it's further along. That's, I don't even think the tough. GameCube animal crossing was a launch title. I'm gonna say further along because yeah. like you said, this is we're barely four years out from the last one. So if anything, uh, I, I think that they would use it as a way to surge sales. Um so, cause here's the thing. Everybody's gonna probably buy a, a Switch Series S, all right? They're they're all gonna buy it, and then all the people who haven't bought it because their friends and family all have them, the Animal Crossing game will be the reason they get it. I could see them maybe just making New Horizons accessible, like re-releasing it with uh, maybe just a few new bells and whistles, but probably not like a whole brand new game. New Horizons Deluxe. <laughs> and then it will get horribly abused like Mario Kart has. I mean, I mean, I want to be against it because I'm not getting rid of my other Switch. So that I, I, have allow me. Lot, I have heard a lot of talk of people like, we don't want a new Animal Crossing game. We just want to migrate New Horizons over. Oh, no, I'm more than happy to start like a whole new island and then I can give resources from my first island to my second one. Right. It's just, I, I the, the way that I've been hearing is like a lot of people are comfortable with how New Horizons works. So at that point, they would just like to be able to migrate everything over to a new console and be able to continue doing what they like doing on Animal Crossing New Horizons. 
So I could I could see that happening. It's it's up to them, but I'm going to I'm going to agree with Alex. I think it's going to be further along. I think it's going to be a way to kind of surge sales of the, the Switch Series S again. Brinson, uh-huh. you're yeah. you're you're the legit Animal Crossing fan. Talk talk us down from that ledge. Do you think it's do you honestly think it's a launch title? Oh, absolutely not. I completely agree that it's probably going to be something further along. Yeah. And if it does end up being a launch title, then I'll swallow my like I I don't know what I'm going to swallow something. I'll swallow <laughs> something. You'll you'll eat crow at some point. Sure. Um, there you go. So the next major franchise that is being discussed is Fire Emblem because Fire Emblem had two to three games because I think they have another one coming. Um, that's like a remake of Fire Emblem three or something like that. So they had two major games and they're, they're having a, a remake coming along. So the speculation is, is that Fire Emblem is like the, the people who made three houses are probably uh, hard at work figuring out how the new hardware is going to work for a Fire Emblem game. And the kind of like with Animal Crossing, it is speculated that this will be probably not the first year, but maybe the second year, uh, because that's kind of what happened with fire emblem with the switch is that they basically because they did like fire emblem warriors uh to to kind of satiate people but then um i can't even remember if it was three houses first but the the first one was like holiday season of that year yeah it was three houses because the uh the uh, protagonist went to smash so at that point that's kind of the speculation it's like it's going to be like for the within the second year or so or after the first year of uh, the console's debut, I tend to agree with that because Fire Emblem, even though it has gained a lot of popularity, it still is very, it's still considered very niche for, for Nintendo anywhere outside of Japan. Like it's mainstay in Japan. It's, it's not considered that in the U S and Canada and all that. Uh, Brenton, let's let's start with you on this. Do, do you think that I'm wrong and it's it's going to launch with the with the Switch Series S or do you think it's just going to be further down the line? Well, didn't we get a new Fire Emblem game last year? The like Fire Emblem Engage? Yep. Maybe that's the other main one I'm thinking of was Engage. And then they've got another one coming that's like a remake. Uh, maybe the remake could be the launch title, but like a proper, like brand new Fire Emblem game. I wouldn't imagine considering that Engaged came out last year. I tend to agree. I I think it's niche enough that they probably want them working on it, but they don't want it. They want they don't want it out right away. Uh, because one thing I have learned from Fire Emblem fans and, and Romney was also of this is like they like the fact that it takes a while for them to get these games out because when they do, these games are masterpieces for the Fire Emblem fans. Uh, Alex, yeah. where, where, where are you with this? Yeah, I don't see one coming out for launch because, well, yeah, we just barely got engaged. Right. So at best, maybe you'll get a remake of an older one or just another report of an older one. But yeah, I don't see anything particularly on the immediate horizon. See, I could see that. Like, they they do a remake, it comes out on Switch, and then you get a port of that in the launch lineup. But that's just because it's a port. You know, ports aren't going to be that hard to move them over. Okay, so the next one uh, that I tend to agree a lot with the speculation here, Mario Kart 9. Um, Considering that Smash is in development, I think that it's very strong that Mario Kart 9 could either A, be a launch title or B, out within six months of it. Because we've we've been teased that it's being worked on a couple of times, but they haven't revealed anything yet. They haven't felt comfortable showing anything. And considering how many bonus courses and how how much solid abuse Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has gotten, like me and Brent had already earlier said... I think it's safe to say that this could be a launch title to be able to bring in the multiplayer uh, aspect of the new console. And obviously one of them, they have said like one of the more popular games in their online is Mario Kart. Uh, I think that the only thing that eclipses it eclipses it right now is smash because smash is still kind of a thing. Uh, Yeah. uh, Let's start with Alex. What do you think Mario Kart nine being launch or it's going to be further along? 
Hmm. How recently was the last Mario Kart? Like literally three months after the, the Switch launched. I just mean when the last game was released. Mm-hmm. The last one um, was eight, right? Yeah, yeah it was I'm eight deluxe. It right they, they basically ported the Wii U version over and oh, then added right, a bunch of new stuff and they they basically kept it alive with DLC. Mario Kart 8 originally came out in America on May 30th, 2014 on the Wii U. U and then again worldwide for the Nintendo Switch on April 28th, 2017. So a month later. Yeah. So it's been so if we're going based off of its initial launch, it has been a decade since we have gotten a new installment into yes. the Mario Kart franchise. No, the mobile game me, doesn't count, Nintendo. Which to me is mind blowing because yeah. I remember sitting in my apartment in Murray playing this game with my old buddy Will. Yeah. Yeah. And I and it, it's it's really difficult for me to realize that it's been 10 years. Well, the, the the worst part about that, too, is like I've played Mario Kart 8 on both Wii U and Switch. I can tell you the online on the Wii U was abysmal. I think the only online game that didn't really or the two online games that didn't have any major issues was obviously Smash didn't. Smash 4 worked fairly well compared to Mario Kart and also um, Splatoon worked fairly well in multiplayer on the Wii U. But. When Mario Kart 8 came out for the Switch, oh my gosh, it was night and day difference. And that, I think, just in a lot of ways actually kept the longevity of Mario Kart 8 because now it was working, people could play it whenever they wanted, and then they just decided to add more more courses to it. But I I do think people are itching for a new Mario Kart. They they especially an HD Mario Kart, and by that I mean like 1080 equivalent and 4k so yeah i think it's about time that that mario kart 9 happens so it wouldn't surprise me if it's a launch title um so i i think that is everybody isn't it uh because i started with alex didn't i yeah but i had to we, we, we talked we talked mario kart the um I had to the phone real quick so they're on that so Smash Bros. is the next one that comes up. And I honestly, I don't think you're going to see a Smash Bros. game within five years of, of its development. And, and the reason I say that is because Sakurai is off working on other things. There is a new established director. We've confirmed that with Nintendo, although I don't know the name off the top of my head. And he is working on things to be able to make Smash his own. But considering how much of a hit Smash Ultimate was for Sakurai, I just don't see it coming out anywhere near like five years out Uh, because I could easily see them because it would be a good idea port Smash Ultimate over so that people can continue to play it and then just use that time to build into the new one like let the team figure out what they want to do that is going to define them from the sakurai era uh brinton where are you at with that uh i i honestly have not even touched or played super smash brothers in a very long time um do i think that it's going to be like a launch title absolutely not just based on things that sakurai has Mm -hmm very straightforwardly said additionally uh a new uh, like iteration of the game coming out something beyond smash ultimate concerns me only in the sense that there was a lot of contention around uh who's getting added into the game and people frankly being very vocal about how they disagreed to disagreed with sakurai on what qualifies like what video game character qualifies or what character in general qualifies to be added into the game which is why you see the rise of so many smash like games where you can play those specific characters because 
for some reason, people really just wanted to play a Shrek beating up on Mario, and Sakurai was just not having it. Um, <laughs> um, and I feel if anything, so... Sakurai actually, in the end, kind of embraced the modders and said, "You do what you want to do." It was Nintendo that didn't like it. Like Sakurai was just Sakurai wanted out. He literally just wanted to stop looking at Smash and go work on something else. But I, I remember like somebody was asking, would you have a problem with modders for Smash Ultimate? He's like, eh, no, not really. At the end of the, I, at the, he, end he of said, the day, he said I don't, something along the along the lines of like Mugen that shit up. I don't think like at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to see another Smash game. And if we do, it's it's probably going to be really, really far down the road. Yeah. And there's so many iterate like there's so many Smash clones out there mm -hmm. that are allowing people not only to continue to mod, but like I said, play a Shrek or like John Cena and just like beat on each other. Or for LeBron James reason. or LeBron James. So. um so I think for for me, observationally, it looks like it appears that there is a satisfaction with what is on the market. Mm. I, and I tend to agree with that. I, that's why I'm thinking like they could easily port ultimate over so that the online can continue. Uh, and, just make and nobody this, would have an issue with it. Just make Switch 2 backwards compatible. Then you don't I have would to love port that. it over. I don't see it <laughs> happening. Well, uh, I, well, I know I can not, already but... feel Alex's eyes on me right now. I, I can guarantee you. I just don't see it happening with Nintendo. Of course, oh, it's I not heard. going to be backwards compatible, but it's a <laughs> you know, it, it would it would solve a lot like it would solve a lot of initial. Right. Well, I like a, it. It would just be. Uh, it it would just save a lot of time. However, yes. as we have learned from Nintendo during this era of Nintendo console gaming, which is rapidly coming to a close, mm -hmm. um, Nintendo definitely likes their money. And so they will more than likely just port it to the new console instead of making the console backwards compatible. Right, right. Because because that's how they do. Uh, so, Alex, you'll, you'll get the final word here. Uh, what what do you think is the future of Smash Bros? Mm, I think it is. I think you're right. I think it's going to be a long time before we see another Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they've got to find their footing if they if they want to continue doing that. And even then, I have a feeling if if they can't do the magic the way Sakurai could, they will easily disband that team and move it to other things. Um, that's just their their way of doing things. Uh, so the next franchise on the list is Metroid. And since I'm the dedicated fan here. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of people have been begging for Prime 4. When is it happening? I honestly think, guys, because of the fact that they swapped from one company to the next. That if anybody got first dibs on the new hardware, it was Retro Studios with Metroid. So at that point, they could do Metroid Prime 4 from scratch and it would be totally justified. And so at that point, that's why I think we haven't heard anything from it. Um, do I think it's going to be a launch title? That's where I think it gets tricky because I could easily see if the Switch to if the Switch series U, I'm just going to start interchanging names at this point. If the Switch series U comes out during the holidays like they're saying it will absolutely because that would be the perfect time to release it uh that's when metroid fans have gotten a lot of the big releases if people remember metroid dread came out around october so perfect time if that's the case if not within the first year of its of its full like within the first year if it, within its first year of release because Prime 4 is the next one on the list. We know that it's being worked on. There's also talk that we might be getting either a Dread sequel or I've also heard rumors of a Super Metroid remake being done, which would be interesting. The the one that the rumor that I actually like the most is if people don't remember, there was a DS game called Metroid Prime Hunters, which a lot of people were very disappointed in because they hadn't played on a DS yet. And so it didn't really work out, 
but it actually was like for those who played Prime Hunters, it was actually a fairly good game. And I have heard talk that the people who did Dread did petition to do a remake of Prime Hunters in order to hype up for Prime 4. That would be a perfect thing to do. The main reason I say that is because one thing I do know from Prime Hunters is that it tried to open up the Metroid universe by actually showing some other bounty hunters that either A, Samus was neutral with, was strict, straight up enemies with, or was uh, was actually friends with. Now, Prime 3 also kind of did the friends part, but they never did like the legit competition or there was actually like a blood feud. Uh, between two of them, between Samus and another one. So at that point, I could totally see them uh, remaking Prime Hunter so that they can put that back in and it would be based in the Prime kind of timeline. So it works perfectly. Uh, so yeah, if not released right at launch, it will be within the first year. Uh, Brinton, Alex, am I smoking crack or am I just like seeing things through wine colored glasses? Or rose colored glasses? I mean, glasses? that's optimistic. I mean, this think... game need this game needs to come out. the The thing is, uh, the Nintendo Switch came out in March 2017. Metroid Prime Four was announced um, at E3 that same year in 2017, and we're coming to the end of the Nintendo Switch uh, generation. And Metroid yeah. Prime Four has not been spoken of or looked at or released. I mean, we've gotten two Legend of Zelda games in the time mm. that we've known this game to be in existence. Um, so I think it would probably blow people's brains to bits if Metroid Prime 4 was a launch title for this new console. I think it would. It, first of all, it would be the first time that a Metroid game has been a release title since I'm I'm literally going through it in my head. I think the GBA was the last time that that happened. And oh my God, even then it was like a month after launch because it came out literally the same day as Metroid Prime. But by that point, Metroid, Pro, uh, the GameCube had been out a year. So at that point, um, yeah, the GB, I think it's fusion. That was the last time that that happened. So this would be a big occasion for Metroid fans. Uh, but as Brenton pointed out, uh, two Zelda games have come out, uh, two Pokemon get no, no, three to four Pokemon games have come out. A couple of Mario games have come out. That's the problem with being a Metroid fan is that releases are very few and far between. So make it make it count is what I'm, is what I'm hoping that they will do, because in Nintendo's eyes, Metroid is still not a, quote, money making franchise. And so they they tend to split that out. But I, I have heard that the momentum has shifted in Nintendo headquarters because of dread. Uh, Alex, what about you? I still pretty doubtful that we're going to see this game anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just unfortunately, it's been radio silence since the announcement that they were changing directions with it. But we yep. still haven't heard anything. I honestly think that we could get another Metroid game before Prime 4 comes out. Mm -hmm. it, it's entirely possible because if you think about it, like um, Mercury Steam has the engine for for Dread. So at that point, let's just say for the sake of argument, they are doing a Prime Hunters remake. They're probably doing it in the Dread engine because that would save money. Right. And so right. at that point, they already have existing assets, whereas we know Prime 4 was built from scratch because they moved over from uh Namkai Bando, because I, I always do this, uh, to Retro Studios. So it, it's, I, I'm fairly confident with what Alex is saying too, because it could happen. We could get another Metroid game before Prime 4. Um, actually, one of the things I have also heard is that Metroid Prime 2 Remastered is happening because Prime Remastered did so well. And I would also believe that uh, since they have an active engine in the works, uh, we could get Prime 2 remastered before Prime 4. So it's just logically it makes sense. Now we're down to the top three franchises that uh, are on the Switch and everybody has speculation for starting up with The Legend of Zelda. So 
Here are the facts. There is no DLC for Tears of the Kingdom. They've already confirmed that. They have basically said that they added in everything that they wanted to add with this. My guess is as soon as they were done, they were given new hardware and told to run with whatever they wanted with. So at that point, if a Zelda game is coming within three, I'm going to, I'm going to speculate within three years because I honestly think that they will have to put something out um, that is probably not as quote revolutionary as Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Um, they'll have to do now that they can do H HD textures and things like that. We actually might see Zelda go back to a formulaic kind of standpoint, at least for one game. I could be wrong. And I know some people will want to smack me for that. But in all honesty, if it has to go further than that, then you're probably going to get uh, Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom HD to tide people over. Uh, Brinton, where, where are you at with that? Um, there there is enough people hoping and praying for like either Wind Waker or Twilight Princess to get ported over to a Switch console. So right. I'm kind of holding out for that. If I'm to be completely honest, yes. As much as I loved the open world concept of uh, this era of Zelda that has come to an end, I wouldn't mind going back to, like, I totally would be happy to play Wind Waker, uh, mm. handheld. Now like I will. 100%. I will say this: the company Grezzo, who did the the Link's Awakening remake, we know they've been hard at work on something. We also know they worked on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl a little bit. So at that point, the, the speculation is they might be working on updated versions of the Oracle games to maybe tie things over until a major Zelda title. And I, I don't know about you, Brenton. I'll, I'll ask Alex as well. I believe that. I think that would be the perfect strategy because they can basically fuel the nostalgia buzz and that will buy the Zelda team more time. Yeah, I'd play it. Mm hmm. It, it, either if they did like if they did a remake of the Oracle games or if they did a remake of or like a switch porting over of a link between worlds. I think those would be amazing ideas. Uh, Alex, what about you? Yeah, I can agree. We definitely won't be seeing any like mainline games for uh, probably another five or six years at best. Yes. Concerned how long how long it took for us to get even tears of the kingdom right that was like another five to six years that's why i'm saying like i wild. could easily yeah. believe them just porting breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom into one big collection and and just doing like breath of the wild tears of the kingdom hd just to buy more time for the zelda team to work on it i'm not quite as convinced about that but i could definitely see them you know focusing in on remaking a smaller title like one of the side titles that you've mentioned right so i think it's definitely a possibility mm -hmm. maybe not at launch because again we're still fairly fresh off of tears of the kingdom within a couple of years probably though mm -hmm. um i've even also heard of this and i, I want to bounce it off of you guys i've heard lots of talk that they ought to a uh, revamp the original three games um, so at that point, like do a remaster of the original Legend of Zelda, do a remaster of Link's uh, Link Adventures of Link. Adventures of Link. Thank you. <laughs> For some reason, I was saying Link's story. I'm like, no, that's never been a title. <laughs> I'm a Zelda fan. I know better. I have to chastise myself. Uh, yeah, Adventures of Link and Link to the Past. And I, awesome. I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be blunt. I could see Link to the Past being done because Link Between Worlds was so successful. The first two, I'm not 100% sure. Instead, I think in all honesty, you could get a Zelda maker before that would happen. They already said they're not going to do it. I know they did, and they can lie to everybody all they want. Wow, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy it. I think it, I know enough people were were excited, excited when Link's Awakening uh, remastered came out with a dungeon maker that it, they've been getting pelted with requests of Mario Maker. So great. Please give us Zelda Maker. Uh, just as much as I know that Capcom has been pelted for Mega Man Maker. So I know what they said. I don't believe them. I think that they entirely would do it. But that's me. 
Um, but yeah, what, what what do you guys think? The the original three could they get remastered? Uh, it would be nice, but I don't see them remastering. I think at best we'll just kind of get a new updated collection with them mm-hmm. just simply ported over re releases. Honestly, th- this this idea just barely came to me. If they were gonna redo like like do like an HD remastering of one of these games, it would probably be adventures of link because I know a lot of people have been begging for that uh, because of how adventures of link kind of sets itself up. Like you could easily make a, a, a Zelda souls type game in that with, with that kind of format. But aside from that, I I'm just, I'm in the link to the past can't uh, camp. I don't think the first two will ever get touched. Um, Brinton, what about you? Sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're okay with it. You don't care if it happens or not. All right. Uh, yeah. I want to be like super crushed. So, so the next franchise that we have here is the Pokemans. Now Pokemon. we just barely had DLC for, for gen nine. Uh, cause I think it was just the, the teal mask. And then is it the indigo mask is the other one? Um, the indigo disc indigo disc so i i don't think they have any others for it do they uh they just they just released an epilogue to the um to the dlc last friday mm-hmm. how but no there is nothing more that we are aware of yep and we do know that uh cuz the pokemon company basically confirmed it without saying so that they have had access to the new hardware for a while. Um, so at that point, I think it's safe to say that Gen 10 would be next gen. Uh, however, the the speculation that I've seen a lot of people uh, talking is that we might get a black and white remaster on next generation if it takes too long for Gen 10 to come out. And I... I'm 50 50 on that. I could honestly see a black and white remaster coming out for both because like people just, they love the remasterings. Uh, br- oh, geez. Uh, Brilliant diamond and shining pearl have been amazing additions to be able to add. I also know that people are also for some reason asking for a let's go version of gold and silver. So that could also happen, but I think it's safe to say Gen 10 is probably mm, within five years. I I don't think any earlier than that. Brinton, am I am I wrong? Generation 10 in five years, like within five years of when next generation or when the, the next console launches. I would imagine like I think. I think that this year we'll probably get some sort of Let's Go game, Legends mm. game, or a Generation 5 remake, and next year will be Generation 10. Really? You think it'll, you think it'll be that much sooner? Yes, I absolutely do. So, Because the, the speculation that, that you would basically be saying is that they probably have had access to new hardware before the Metro team got it. They probably might have been the first ones to get it. I'm pretty certain that they already know what generation 10 I'm like, I'm sure they already know who the starters are going to be, what their final evolutions are, what the region looks like. And like, maybe, and a, maybe a basic. Story. Yeah. I was going to say like a basic plot. Okay. Uh, all right. But, but I, I guess that, that it actually, you know what? A legends game in between that actually sounds uh, pretty viable too. Cause I know that people have been begging for it. Alex, what about you? I'm actually going to be with you, Adam, that I think we're going to say a few years off for the next full generation. But I could see where Brinton's also coming from with, you know, within mm. a t- within that time frame, we very well could see another Legends game. Uh, we could definitely see a, a Let's Go game. Uh, but I think it'll take a little time to, to finally get into Gen 10 mm. before just jumping in. I think because I think the Pokemon company has said they're going to reevaluate some things mm. or just jump it ahead with with another game. So, yeah, I could see them taking a little more time, especially concerning, you know, some of the criticisms around the most recent uh, 
Scarlet and Violet. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that that's Pokemon. Now we can get into the big franchise, the the number one, Super Mario Bros. So Super Mario Brothers. This is tricky because Wonder just barely came out, but that would technically be the 2.5 derivative. And so a lot of people are speculating since we haven't gotten an Odyssey 2 that maybe Odyssey 2 would be for the next generation. I think that's entirely plausible. And I honestly think it is much more likely for Mario to be the launch title for the next console than Metroid. I'm a Metroid fan. Guy, Metroid fans out there, it hurts me to say that too. But Mario is just, he's the staple. And considering the popularity of the movie and everything like that, I could, I could totally see them launching with like an Odyssey 2 or a 3D variant of some kind coming out to sell the initial uh, Switch 360. So at that point, um, am I smoking crack on from either of you? No, it no perfectly it, it has that to, mm-hmm. that Mario game. It has to happen that way. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if not only did we have a Mario game, but maybe like a Mario Party was was coming out around that time, or or maybe even like within six months, like a Mario Sports game. I now here's the thing: if Mario is the launch title, I don't think Mario Kart is. I think they would actually wait a month or two and then release Mario Kart so that they don't overlap each other. But it it just depends on Nintendo, honestly, because, I mean, it's entirely plausible that they would put a Smash next to a Mario game, so I don't know. Um, what, what do you guys think of that? If, if, Mario, if Mario is the launch title that Mario Kart move, gets moved out. Would make sense, for sure. Yeah, I mean, they, they did that with Odyssey and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 came out a month after the the Switch launched and right, Odyssey and was then, holiday season that year. Correct. So oh, okay, they okay, did not yeah, so you're saying the that. opposite happened. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I I believe that. Um okay, so those are the major franchises. I know that there are a bunch that uh, a, a few of our listeners have reached out in regards to. Uh so I'm just going to really quickly if you guys have an opinion on them, you can go ahead and and uh give it but I'm I'm just going to go over them as fast as I can. Donkey Kong. Uh, I, I think another Donkey Kong game is being worked on because the switch re the, the switch port of tropical freeze did way better than the Wii U version. Do I think it's retro studios? I'm not 100% sure. I, I think maybe they would probably do it internally. So I don't think, um, I think a Donkey Kong game is being worked on. I just don't think it's going to be like retro that's doing it. New Kirby game. I think a new Kirby game is very likely, but nowhere near launch uh, because Kirby and Mario together. Kirby gets trounced. Sorry, Kirby fans. Mm -hmm. Uh, Splatoon. I could see Splatoon 4 within like three years. I do not think it would be launch title by any means. Uh, especially now that Splatoon has competition, Square Enix has made Foam Stars, and I think uh, a U.S. developer is also making a Splatoon clone, so they've got to up their game to be able to stay in the market. Uh, Technically, Bayonetta is a Nintendo franchise now. Yes, I do think a Bayonetta game is on the horizon. It's just going to be following the, the origin stuff from here on in. I think even... The people of Platinum have pretty much confirmed that, that if if they do more Bayonetta, it's going to be based more in the younger years of Bayonetta's life or new characters. So, yes, I do think that's happening. Another interesting piece of speculation is if people remember at the Game Awards, we got a bunch of Sega announcements. And it turns out that the rumors are a lot of the stuff that we have been shown was technically eligible for new Nintendo hardware. And so that's led to speculation that maybe Sega will partner up with Nintendo with a lot of their uh, older franchises. And basically it will be the old guard against the new guard. Um, I don't think that's likely. I think in all honesty, Sega would be more than willing to put things out early on on Nintendo consoles. But Yakuza does well on Sony and I think even Shinobi would do the Shinobi Metroidvania would do well on a Sony console. So 
I don't I don't think that's plausible. Alex, feel free to smack me if if I'm speaking lies. I think you're right about that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would love that because it would be so stupidly amazing. It, it's not likely. <laughs> um, it, it's basically wishful thinking at that point. Xenoblade. Xenoblade was very popular on the Switch, was it not, uh, Brenton? It did extremely well. So a lot of people have been asking, or a, a lot of people have been speculating if Monolith has also gotten some new hardware. And their next major RPG is going to be on that hardware. I think it's entirely possible. I do not think it will be a Xeno title. Uh, Not because I I know that Takahashi has said that he's not done. He's not going to retire anytime soon. Um, But I the, the way that he's spoken is that the even though I have seen the ending for Xenoblade 3 and it does leave things open to be able to continue Xenoblade, I think think he was just okay with ending things at three games so at that point he would probably want his team to start coming up with new ideas so that he can you know gently bow out uh (coughs) so yes i do think that monolith is working on something i don't think it will be a a, it it may be a xeno title but it's just not him it's not going to be xeno blade am i wrong about that brenton I from after all the expansions and DLC for Xenoblade 3 came out, um it, it was my understanding that the Xenoblade uh Chronicles saga is complete. So mm-hmm. if another Xeno game does come out, it's gonna be of course titled Xeno something, yes. but it's gonna be completely unrelated to the saga that just completed. Mm-hmm. And no, Xeno fans, I do not think Xenoblade Chronicles X is going to be brought over to new hardware or ported to the Switch. If they were going to do it, they would have done it by now, and it hasn't happened. So I, I don't mean to be the the pain in the ass, but Nintendo's fairly... Cons- like As soon as Xenoblade 1 did well, and then Xenoblade 2 just basically smashed a lot of the numbers that they thought it would do... If they were going to do Xenoblade X, it would have been right after Xenoblade 2 to to keep people hyped for Xenoblade 3, and they just didn't do it. Instead, they waited for for the DLC for Xenoblade 2, and they just let Monolith do their thing. So that's why that's why I'm saying, like, I think it could be a Xeno title. I just think Xenoblade as a chronicle is done. Uh, And those are the, the major ones that are brought up as far as franchises. So obviously we we could get proven wrong in a week, two weeks, maybe even a month. But I think that what we have said basically is is as accurate as it's going to be. Am I wrong about that? As best as we can guess, right? (laughs) Right. Yeah, I would definitely agree to that. So at that point, let's talk about what we're looking forward to in 2024. Um, So I did give you guys lists to be able, uh, basically websites showing some of the releases that we were aware of at that time. Obviously, things can change and uh, you guys were able to to pick out some things. So let's start out with the video games. What games are you guys looking forward to in 2024? I will start this up because I need to mention it. Uh, the fact that we are getting so the fact that that Square Enix is actually working on a lot of their side RPG franchises, not necessarily Final Fantasy. I am excited for both Saga Emerald Beyond, which is going like the Saga series isn't necessarily one of their more popular ones in the States, but I'm glad that they've decided to take Saga in a new direction. I think it's basically going to be Square Enix competing with Persona. Uh, Not 100%, but in a way. And also the fact that we are getting the first continuation in the Mana series in years. So I am excited for both of those. Uh, Alex, what is a game you're looking forward to in 2024? Hmm. Oh, I'm just looking at the list right now. So Mm -hmm. I see... Oh, we got Star Wars Dark Forces remaster. That sounds kind of that is that is going to be amazing. Uh, but here the, the here's the only thing I'm worried about with it is we haven't seen a uh, a trailer for it. 
I so see. we don't yeah. I think we got a trailer early on, but we haven't seen any updates for it. So that'll be that'll be an interesting one. Uh, Brinton, do you have any? Uh, I've <laughs> just because my priorities right now are kind of more f- school focused mm-hmm. that and I am playing two MMOs that both have expansions coming out this year. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to say, oh, and there's also probability I'm going to get my tonsils removed. So mm-hmm. with all of that being stated, um, for right now, uh, I'm keeping my eyes set for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, I am very much looking forward to playing that. I'm trying and to remember, then... is that March or April? No, it's February, actually. Fe- February 29th. Yeah, because <laughs> we, cause we're in a leap year, boys and girls. Yeah, and I th- I think that's super fun. I thought that was really <laughs> clever. Um, and then, and then just like Dawn Trail and the War Within. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ultimately, I haven't. Like I said, my priorities have just been more school focused. Yep. So I'm not trying to like overhype myself for playing video games that I may or may not have time for. And so I haven't really paid attention too closely to what is or is not coming out Mm -hmm. i've been very more aware of what's coming out in the first quarter and then just being aware that both the dawn trail and the war within don't have release dates (laughs) right um i will also highlight another game that is coming out this month that i'm excited for uh because i am still kind of the dedicated fighting game guy but um tekken 8 is looking effing amazing. And I'm not normally a guy who owns tech, like a lot of Tekken games. I've, I've played a lot of the Tekken games, um, minus the PS2 era, but Tekken seven was amazing and kind of brought me in, especially considering that they brought, uh, two very awesome legacy, uh, boss characters from other franchises into the DLC. Well, I mean, Akuma was a launch character and then eventually they brought in uh, Gis for DLC for Tekken 7. Just seeing what improvements that they have made to the Tekken 8 engine, I am absolutely stoked for it. So I'm, I'm going to highlight that here because that's going to be the end of January. And it might be the first Tekken game I've bought since 3. Because I didn't technically buy seven, I played it online. <laughs> so, because uh, I think I I think I played it when it was available for PlayStation Network, and so I don't have a physical copy of of Tekken Seven. But I might buy Tekken Eight. I I've loved a lot of what they're doing, and and considering the story, like the the fact that they tried to t- tie up a lot of story loose ends in Seven, and I have a feeling they're going to be doing that in Eight as well. I'm kind of excited for that one. Um, any, any others for you, Alex? Uh, let me look. Actually, what oh. I, while, while you're looking, Alex, I'm going to bring this up with Brinton. Are you remotely interested at all in the Tomb Raider one through three remasterings that are happening? So these are the, the original PlayStation games being remastered. Uh, I, 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 I am, I actually forgot about those. <laughs> yeah, a- Andrea has been making sure that I don't forget because they literally it's literally coming out on Valentine's Day. So that might be her Valentine's Day present is that I, I get that for her. <laughs> I, maybe I'll drop some hints to my husband. Because <laughs> here's the thing. I'm not a big fan of Big Boob Lara, but considering we are, you know, like Uncharted 4 was 2014, maybe um, we haven't really gotten any new games like that in a while. I wouldn't mind mess- going backwards and and seeing how those games turned out. So I'm I'm interested in that. Uh, Alex, have you been able to find one? Prison Arch- Prison Architect Two. Wow. <laughs> I was wondering if you would notice that one. There was there was a point, uh, Brenton, where we would we would get ready and me and Romney would be giggling at Alex because we would see on Steam that he's playing Prison Architect. Oh my god. So. I like any just sim building game. Yeah. Don't yes, you do. Me. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, another game that I'm excited for is the reboot of Alone in the Dark. 
So Resident Evil has been getting a ton of reboots. Silent Hill is looking at a bunch of, of revampings. And now the the original mofo of survival horror, Alone in the Dark, is going to get re redone, uh, re retold in glorious PS5 graphics in March. Uh, I have no problem saying me and Andrea are waiting for that. Just because now now we can have so now we have zombies and now we can have some good old fashioned Cthulhu horror. Because, yeah, Alone in the Dark dealt with a lot of eldritch bullshit. <laughs> so um, but those are those are kind of the main ones. I'm also excited. This is more of an indie thing, but uh, Ayudin Chronicle, which is going to be the spiritual successor of Suikoden, another game series that is beloved that belongs to Konami. And it turns out that um, I think it's level five or no, it it might be another company. But basically, they've been reaching out to all of the former Konami devs like um, the the guy who did Bloodstained and, and all that. They reached out to the creator of Suikoden and allowed for him to make Ayudin Chronicle. So I'm excited to see what that turns out to be, because Suikoden was, in my opinion, one of the better RPGs out there considering it came from Konami. So those those are a bunch of games to be able to look forward to. Uh, let's get into the let's get into the films. What, what movies are we looking forward to in 2024? And I can already tell you guys I have one uh, because of the fact that we had a vacation a couple of months ago. I'm looking forward to Ghostbusters, the Frozen Empire. I don't know why they named it that. That is a weird title, yeah. It, it it almost feels like it's Ghostbusters, Wrath of the Lich King. I don't know why it has that title, but it does. Uh, but I am looking forward to it because Afterlife was very, very good. And I'm I'm looking forward to see what, what they do with it. Um Alex, do you, do you have any? I'm trying to see. I can't get the darn list to come up, but definitely I agree with the Ghostbusters sequel. I want mm -hmm. definitely to that one too yeah i'm i'm looking forward to that that's going to be march of this year so that that's going to be helpful um oh another one uh so these these are literally coming out the same weekend uh godzilla x kong the new Ep empire i i'm all i'm all in for kaiju shit in fact i really really wish i could get that uh monarch series that is apple tv only somewhere else because i don't want to go to apple tv to watch it i really want to go to like prime video and watch it uh and also kung fu panda 4 which is i've seen the trailer for it and i'm strangely intrigued so i if i find some time i'm probably gonna go and watch that brinton do you have any any films that you're looking forward to this year the ghostbusters film for sure um i'm i think uh, I know Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is coming out this year as well. That's right, because I just barely saw the, the teaser poster for that with uh, with Shadow. Yeah, I think uh, the next Avatar film comes out uh, this year, too. I think, yeah, Holidays or something like that. They, they yeah. spaced them out. Yeah, yeah. It, um, there was like this whole rumor and, about it at the end of 2022 about how Sonic 3 and Avatar 3 are both coming out at the exact same time. <laughs> yep. Um, another example that I can see that that has my interest is Inside Out 2. Um, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. still worried about it, but uh, I, I'll probably wait and see what people say before I go and see it myself. Um, Despicable Me 4, that's probably going to be something for the kids because uh, now that they're actually watching some other things, that might be interesting. Uh, we do have an alien movie coming out this year. Yes, Alex. we alien do. Romulus. Yeah, yeah. We will I'm officially find out that. that the the xenomorphs are part of the Star Trek continuity. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. They started on the planet Romulus and the Romulans love them. So mm. they're just cuddle buddies at the end of the day. I, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> Craven the Hunter will be in August. I'm I'm not watching that. Yeah, I'm officially um, I'm actually quite officially done with superhero movies, to yeah. be frankly honest. Well, and on Especially top of that, like the Morbius movie, which we talked up so much, Alex, and then all of a sudden that thing comes out and throughout all of social media is nothing but it's Morbin time. 
memes. It's just like, nah, I don't have any faith for Craven. Uh, I, I just, just don't. Just a disaster that Disney was this past year. Yeah. Um, I like, I, like I'm just done. That, that's kind of why I'm worried about Inside Out too. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, is because like from what I've been able to to hear, because I haven't seen any of these films, because everybody I've talked to has said they like all of the the Pixar films, all of the Disney CG films have just been lackluster, have not uh, been like the magic that people have expected. And so I haven't really gotten into any of them. And that's that's my concern with Inside Out, too, is is I love the first one and I don't want it to be lackluster. So I'm I'm worried about that. Uh, oh, Alex, Alex, you'll be happy. Beetlejuice, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm excited about that one, but I'll, I'm definitely curious. But OK, OK. All right. All right. <laughs> it's, it's OK to be. Ah. It's OK to be curious. I get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, so we, we have Beetlejuice, too. Oh, good Lord. Really? We, we have a Transformers movie. I'm going to get pestered so many times to go see it. <laughs> Oh, look, and it's an origin story. Yeah, no, I, I'm is out. Live action? Is it live action or animated? Uh, I can't tell. Uh, so it's an origin story set on Cybertron, home of both the Autobots and Decepticons. The film is said to focus on the relationship between Optimus Prime and Megatron. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find any other details, but I could already tell you it's probably live action and I'm probably going to hate it. Um... We also have the Joker sequel that's coming out in October. Um, I'll probably avoid that one. <laughs> Cause yeah, not, not really looking forward to that. Uh, what, what's this November 27th? We have the, Oh, Incredibles three. I didn't even know Incredibles three was a thing. I didn't know it either. is. Apparently it is. It's got a release date in November. So, yeah, that's a thing, apparently. Uh, and then Lord of the Rings, the War of the Rohirrim is supposed to come out in December. It's now a movie. It's no longer going to be a series, which is what it was on Netflix. So I guess that'll be fun. Sonic 3 is set in December. It's going to be closer to Christmas and, and it's coming out right next to the prequel of The Lion King. Gee, I wonder who's going to see what. The There's going to be a Lion King prequel? Yes. So the CG Lion King, um, it's going to be a prequel. It's literally t- titled Mufasa, the Lion King. Interesting. Considering that CG Lion King compared to the other numbers from what I've been told didn't do as well. So it, it's been yet another example of the live action, uh, live action adaptations not doing the job. So at that point, the fact that they got enough to get a sequel, I just. Okay, have fun with that. Uh, are there any other movies that you're seeing that maybe I'm I'm missing, Alex or or Brenton? No. Are, are you thinking of any? Well, I'm I'm continuing to look up this Transformers one movie. Uh, nothing no. else stand, comes to mind. I, uh, I'm in I I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like Transformers one is going to be an animated movie. Um, with such great, uh, uh, nothing but star star studded cast of Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime. Oh boy, Thor is Optimus Prime, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a hundred percent. Keegan uh, Michael Key will be playing Bumblebee. Yeah, F that. I'm okay noise. with that. <laughs> I don't oh, want them well. touching Bumblebee anymore. They've screwed him up so bad. Um, oh, in, in that sense, got you. Yeah. Brian Tyree Henry will be playing Megatron. Uh, fine. Scarlett Johansson will be playing Alita One, aka Optimus Prime's love interest. And if I can guess where the movie plot is going to go, probably the reason that Optimus Prime and Megatron started the war to begin with. Um, Lawrence Fishburne is Alpha Trion. That's an interesting casting. Although, I mean. I, I could say that they go could go for George Decay, but George Decay keeps on wanting to end his own career. So maybe that's not a good idea. I mean, let the poor man <coughs> live the rest of his life calmly. Mm-hmm. And off Twitter. 
Twitter has Twitter is an example. He is an example of why Twitter is not good for you. Uh, yeah, an upcoming Transformers I think Twitter film. Twitter is not good for anybody. It really <laughs> isn't. Uh, yeah, it's an animated prequel movie set on Cybertron. So maybe if it's CG, but I'm not I'm not getting excited for it. I'm just going to be honest, guys. I I don't trust anything coming out of Hasbro right now. But Alex can feel free to to chastise me for that, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I haven't kept up with anything. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, the, there are some good movies that are coming out. I'm at least remotely interested in how the Sonic trilogy is going to end. But mm, yeah, Ghostbusters is really the big one for me. I don't know about you guys. Uh, hey, I'm excited for Aliens and um, Ghostbusters okay. and Inside Ghostbusters. Out too. Yeah, uh, Inside Out too, Ghostbusters, Alien, and Sonic for sure. All right. So at that point, let's let's get into some of the upcoming series, specifically the Animus that are coming out, which Alex is supposed to be an expert in because he's supposed to have the entire list. So uh, go ahead, Alex. What what is the entire list? Uh. <laughs> that's I what i thought <laughs> it even covered. there's a lot of shows that's not even covered on that but yeah on the article that i that it's very is. difficult to find a uh consolidated list of like the streaming series and what they're coming out with because a lot of those are still very tentative because i think the the netflix stuff especially is still dealing with like aftermath of the of the strike and everything like that so yeah. Only for like dubs, but otherwise every anime is still on schedule. It should be. Yeah. So like the, the ones that the art, the article that we have ha have on here, there's classroom of the elite delicious in dungeon, uh, the demon prince of Momochi house. I, I can already tell you I'm, I'm not really interested in any of this, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, that list, at least. But I'm so far shows, back. Though. Alex can attest to this. I'm so far backed up in my anime that I, I could easily go for the rest of my life and never get caught up again. So that that's that's just a reality at this point. Is there yeah. anything anything you're looking forward to this coming out, Alex? Yeah, I've uh, got some spring shows. You got your camp season three. That's coming in spring. Uh, Sound Euphonium three. That's also coming out in spring, mm -hmm. uh, supposedly. I, I don't know because I haven't seen any release dates or heard any news since. But the next, the uh, what is it? Fourth Monica Magica movie, uh, the fourth in the Monica Magica movie series after ten long years is supposed to be coming out this year. Maybe where we we'll will see. find out that Monica is officially a xenomorph. <laughs> At this point, I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> hey, 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 we're getting an Aliens movie, man. You might as well have the consistency. Maybe not Monica, but Homura might be coming. <laughs> we'll see. No, 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 She's no, no. Homer is the predator. She... Homer is the predator. That would make sense, too. Yeah. <laughs> that would make... That would make and is just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you... You all do y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she already, be well, I mean, Homer already became the devil, so I wouldn't put it past her to become a to become a predator or a xenomorph or a xeno predator morph. Pro pro probably, probably. That that's going to be the unofficial alien versus predators is that Homero will kill them all. Um, <laughs> I, just be. just looking over this really quick, I do know that there's a couple of returns. We do have One Piece returning for the. Egghead Island arc. I I don't know which one that is. Uh, Blue it's Exorcist already started. So Blue Exorcist is also returning. We also do have season four of Demon Slayer. Um, it's Demon Slayer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so season four of Demon Slayer is happening. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen I thought was canceled, but apparently it's going to get a season three. So. <laughs> super popular so no way yeah i there, so our, our buddy say, c tactics will be very happy about that what made you think that it got canceled i thought i saw something from c tactics saying it was no there was rumors that the second season may not finish because of the poor working conditions at mappa but not only did they finish the season but it got renewed for a third okay well there you go i get to i get to eat some 
pro on that one. That time I got reincarnated as a slime is coming back for season three. Um, I will tell you that I've got a really outrageous title and the title alone might sell me on wanting to watch at least episode one of it. Too many Christmas anime titles are getting so long now. Banished from the hero's party, I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. And this is the second season of it. Oh my god, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. A coworker and I were looking up ridiculous anime just uh, titles. Good lord! It's like basically you're putting in the, the synopsis of the whole series in the title. So that way everybody knows what it's about. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So exactly uh, I, what they do, why they do it. I, I just I love that concept. Um, the the other one that's interesting to me is the wrong way to use healing magic. Um, considering that I've heard of other series like Redo of Healer that people have said I need to go watch. So the wrong way to use healing magic. There's a, there's a wrong way. OK. Uh, but yeah, the, those not not a whole lot of this is kind of stepping out to me is the. I know that there was a new season of My Hero, Brinton. Is that happening right now? Um, I think the next season is next year. Uh, but there is, but all the seasons uh, that have run have been completed. Uh, okay. I think it's either six or seven. I can't remember how what the next one is supposed to be. Jiminy Christmas. How long is that manga? Is it even finished? It's still going, but it's uh, it's approaching the end. Okay, so, I mean, we can't all be Eichiro Oda and go for a thousand manga volumes, so. I think, um, no, I think that One Piece need, like, One Piece needs to be done. Um, <laughs> you like, think? <laughs> it's, I, 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 I mean, I, I never really got into it, but just mm-hmm. kind of based on uh, just how long it's run, it's kind of like, it it's just it's just like dude like call it a day right like oh let let's be done there there was a movie that that um one of our listeners wanted us to talk about and that was the anticipated ray film that was supposed to be coming out later this year but there's not really a whole lot to say about it because i think as of last week it just got put in development hell um it, it's basically delayed indefinitely so i can already tell you if that movie was coming out i wasn't gonna see it uh i don't know about you guys like i what i don't it? it was supposed to be a continuation of ray's story but not necessarily be like an episode 10 and i i don't care i i don't i'm not compelled enough to care about ray's character you're talking about Star Wars. OK, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the, the I forgot about that because there was some controversy earlier this year with uh, the the director of said Ray movie kind of mouthing off and basically screaming F you to the fans and all of that crap, which I just don't care about anymore because that's basically just par for the course Hollywood behavior at this point. Um and so, at the, and on top of that, like Ray as a Star Wars character, I just I'm not interested in any continuation of her story. I would much rather see something else if they could, you know, start learning to make good stories again. But as we mentioned earlier, Disney's kind of having a problem with that. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so there you go. We we address that. And like I said, the the streaming series, a lot of them don't have uh final release dates and probably won't i honestly because i remember when castlevania nocturne happened i think it was like a month they gave people a month's notice that it was it had a release date and that was about it and that's kind of how things are going with a lot of streaming series is you might get like maybe a quarter's worth of notice but most of the time it's like a month so it's it's difficult to talk about it. Uh, the one I know that we can mention is because it's still out there being considered is the Netflix Devil May Cry. We don't have much to work on with, though, because they they basically have shown five seconds of uh, of footage from it. And it's Dante grinning. I don't know what else to say. Like, have you even seen any of this, Brenton? Ah. Uh. 
I don't, I don't think I have. Yeah, it, it's basically like a f- five to ten second clip of Dante looking down, uh, looking down somewhere and going, hey, you know, and just like his typical kind of grin. And that's it. That's all we got. In fact, what's funny is we got more for the Netflix Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider had 20 seconds of footage. Hmm. So at that point, those are probably the two that would probably pique our interest. But I mean, if we're getting 10 seconds of footage, I got to be honest with you guys. I don't think we're going to get them this year. I might be wrong, maybe later, but. Like we need full on trailers, right? I agree. But I mean, if we get them, then we can obviously give our thoughts on them. Uh, But with that, uh, that's pretty much all the speculation that we have in 2024, unless you guys have anything else you want to add. I I don't I don't have anything. I'll I'll take that as as no. But I did actually want to point some other things out because we do have some upcoming plans for for the podcast in 2024 that I think people will be very excited about. First of all, that I I did kind of tease it earlier in this podcast, but streaming is going to resume. Uh, so at that point we will get back to, to streaming again. I know it's been forever since we've streamed, but trust me guys with the way that my work schedule has gone and with the way Alex's work schedule is probably gone. And the fact that Brenton's been freaking sick, we just weren't able to do it up until this point. And I think we're, we're set for tomorrow, aren't we to finish dot yeah. hack. And all goes well. Yeah, if all goes well, and then maybe we'll we'll get into the DLC dungeon for Breath of the Wild. It just depends on how long dot hack takes. I know you said you saved like right in the middle of the dungeon, so hopefully it doesn't take that long. But I guess we'll find out. We'll see. But yeah, streaming will resume. But like I said earlier, we probably aren't going to focus on the new games because one thing I've noticed is like God of War Ragnarok is kind of the exception where we did get a lot of focus on that because of the road to Ragnarok. We're probably just going to play the new games on our own and we'll focus on the, the basically old games, but they're new to me and Andrea or me new to Alex or or something to that extent. If we change that, we change it, but that's going to be the plan from here on in. Uh, But thankfully we also do have some other podcast plans in case people didn't catch this, uh, me and Andrea have actually started working on the next Geek News Anime Night, which is going to be for Beyblade Season 1. And I'm already telling you that we are having so much fun with Tyson's grandpa. Um, he is such a insert 90s reference here that we are laughing our asses off at him. So you guys can look forward to that. All of the and also the fact that I don't know why they did this with the first season of Beyblade, but every character in that looks chubby and it's <laughs> it's lovably something that I make fun of the whole damn time, uh, especially considering like when you have characters like Ichigo, Kurosaki and, and, and amazingly thin and then you have Tyson and it's like, huh, he's got meat on his bones. Um, Alex or uh, Brinton and I have an interesting podcast that's going to be coming up because we're going to be joining up with Rising Sun again to discuss Blizzard's 2024 plans, including The War Within, and maybe when it's going to be releasing. But also, as Brenton has been teasing, we're going to be talking Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail and going over some of the highlights of that and what we're excited for. So, obviously, Brenton, you're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be a great conversation. Now, I should say we also have a little bit of bad news because... The Battle City Finals are going to get delayed until the summer. The main reason we are doing this is because we do not want to add to Brenton's already hectic school schedule. So we, uh, even though technically we did try to record the first episode, uh, it kind of didn't work out. And part of that was my fault. We are going to resume the Battle City Finals this summer and hopefully get through it. If not, we'll we'll probably wait until after the next semester for Brenton to do that so that we all have the time, because as we've mentioned, all of the episodes are at minimum three episodes and at most six. Because that sounds fun, right? Uh, in the meantime, Way though, fun. Alex and I are going to be tackling Sonic Prime season one. And uh, Alex, are you excited about that? Oh. Um, this will be the first new series since Sonic Boom, right? 
Yeah. And for some reason, we we honestly, I think we've had this argument. We we need Sonic Boom on DVD just so that we can sit back and laugh at it. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to take we're going to tackle Sonic Prime. I know a few other Sonic fans have said you guys need to, to check it out. So we'll we'll do that. And then also we are going to be doing uh, the return of movie podcasts. Uh, we will take suggestions for it, but I actually do have a couple in the list already that I kind of want to do, including the first one that we're going to be doing, uh, which is going to be Batman Mask of the Phantasm. For those who don't know what it is, it is the official animated movie for Batman, the animated series. It's the only one that ever went to theaters. Everything else was straight to DVD. So at that point, we're going to tackle that one. It is an amazing movie. And frankly, uh, considering that it is also its 20th anniversary as of Christmas last year, and uh, considering the passing of Kevin Conroy, it's only appropriate to go over this film mm -hmm. and how freaking amazing it was. So at that point, we'll probably try and do some kind of a quarterly movie podcast. But again, a lot of that's going to depend on what's going on in our lives, especially with with Brenton trying to get his master's. So we'll keep you guys posted, obviously. But there are a lot of things there that you guys can look forward to that are going to be happening very soon. And that's all I've got for you. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Hopefully you guys had an amazing holiday season unlike us we where we were running ourselves into the ground brinson if people want to reach out to you to maybe recommend a movie or a video game that you can look forward to when you're not so busy with school how do they do that you can find me on twitter man at Satchatore 30 i will one day find uh, create that ai picture that uh i have to recreate it where it's basically elon musk but in Mega Man x armor I, I will make that <laughs> and then I will make Brenton make that as avatar for like a month <laughs> just because, you know, I'll do it. You and I both will do it just because that'll be great. Um, Alex, how do they reach out to you? Get me on YouTube. Shadow Blizzard 3000 is my channel, so be on the watch out for a video soon. And I actually did get a question from a listener in regards to you. Do you have anything major that's coming soon? Are you going to? Somebody was asking if you were going to still be doing seasonal reviews. I don't think you stopped. I don't really do seasonal reviews very often. No. I know you did like I, a few years ago, but I didn't I, think you I stopped guess I used it. To do, I guess I used to do kind of like a quick first impressions videos off the cuff, but I don't really do those anymore. Mm -hmm. I haven't really produced much of anything lately, but. I do have something in the pipeline, so just watch out for it. That's all you, you've got something in the part pipeline because you you've been working on on dating sim tech. So, yeah, and Rising Sun has been teaching you how to make the uh, the Carl's Jr. dating sim that everybody wants, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> damn it, Rising Sun, I'm reaching out to you. Do I need to do I need to take Light Chan hostage? This is happening. You made the Taco Bell dating sim. This will happen. Or, or maybe it'll be a Jack in the Box dating sim. I don't know, but it will happen. Damn it. Uh, so with that, also, if you guys were to reach out to me, obviously you're on the YouTube channel. So if you like what you heard, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It really does help us out. You guys can check us out live when we can go live. And also you can check out some of the other content that I have, like Questing with Drac, where I'm going over the Dragonflight storyline, which as of this week just ended. So at that point, I at, le I at least have a light at the end of the tunnel, Brinton. I know where it ends. I'm so happy for you, Adam. <laughs> so at that point, I can easily get that done three months into the war within. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> that's probably <laughs> how long it's going to take. Uh, I also no, don't say that you'll be OK. <laughs> um, I also have game reviews coming soon. I've also got uh, we're going to be returning with the geek with the general GNRO minicast, uh, which I know that has been absent, but it's only because I have been so busy. I have not been able to look at any news. I've been so busy with uh, delivering packages that I've just basically been listening to stuff. I have not even remotely touched the news. So you're going to be having that coming back. You guys can check that out. And also you can check out the podcast on podcast platforms like Amazon Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Player.fm, and of course, Spotify. And we will be back next time to, now that we have put January in the books, kinda, 
we will tackle some of these stories that happened during January, along with the ones that maybe happened during February, next time on Geek News Reviews and Opinions. So for myself, for Alex, and for Brinton, we will wish you all Happy New Year, and hopefully it's a good one. Screw that, it's not going to be good. Oh my god, the politics are going to flow this year! <laughs> oh look, he's been swept away by the politics. <laughs> oh no. Bye.